Black Rain is the first song on the record, isn't it? Mm -hmm. um, it's one of the last songs you wrote for the record, actually. Is it? It is, yeah. It's yeah. the first one you sing on, isn't it? It is, yeah. And um, I wanted the intro to sound like it was uh, Never Ever by All Saints. Oh, yeah. A few questions that I need to know. Mm -hmm. um, and it doesn't really sound like that. <laughs> but uh, that's, that was the idea. Yeah. And uh, our friend Ellie from Signals, um, the band Signals, you check them out, she does the spoken word intro um, in place of Madeline, her character from the, um, the album. And it is the first song you sing in, and it's the first song on the record. So I think it introduces the record very well in terms of like stylistically what we're going for. Um, it's a very dramatic intro as well. It's kind of. Um, is a good bookend to, to open the record with because it closes very dramatically as well. Mm. So. There's a lot of choral elements in there. We've got like, how many people was it? Like six or seven people together to do the choir bits. Um, yeah, which help with, it kind of like makes it even more dramatic at the end. Well, in the chorus of the Yeah. Yeah. Also had that bit with the bass, um, it goes boom. Oh, yeah. when Sean was going to go, ah! <laughs> <laughs> at one point. Um, but yeah. <laughs> Poison Pens is uh, the first Harkle song on the record, um, kind of very reminiscent of uh, songs I me and Ian were writing when we were younger. Um, we wanted to write something that was aggressive, um, that maybe sounded like, it was kind of in the vein of like With Honour or like Ignite or something like that, fast Harkle with uh, a lot of melody, like, like melodic vocal rather than like a screamy vocal. Um, and it's got a really cool middle section um, where it drops and changes pace and tone. And um, we laid out the Marilyn Manson vocal chamber. Oh, yeah. Um, where that's kind of like a whispery vocal we do over the top of a regular vocal. Um, it's um, one of my favourite favorite songs in the record, I think. Yeah. They're good, very fast. They haven't written something like it up to that point. So it's, it's, a, new, it's a new thing for us. Exciting. Uh, yeah, that was the first one, the first single that we released. Um, yeah, that, that's got the, I think you hear a lot of the piano -y bits in that as well. Although, actually saying that, there's there's a lot of the, the breakdown bits has got piano in Black Rain as well. But uh, And again, we got Ellie from Signals to do the breathing bits. Because, oh yeah, it wasn't here, was it? Because I didn't want to do it. I was like, oh no, I don't want to do that. Uh, cause and now you do it every day. And now I do it every day. Now I do it live. But uh, on the recording, that oh, was, was that Ellie. That was Ellie again because I felt really scared and was like, no, I don't want to do it. So. And it was really weird. <laughs> Ellie tracked loads and loads of sexy breathing, and uh, we all in the, the um, in the mixing room just going. Ooh, ooh, ooh. It sounded really cool though. <laughs> yeah. um, it was um, it, the reason we did that was it was in reference to an Icarus Line record, Mono. Um, when they had uh, uh, some female vocal on it, was that was really high. I always thought it was really cool. And there was some sex noises on top of that. I thought it added like a real drama, and it kind of um, was a nod or a tip of the hat to uh, what happens in Paradise by the Dashboard Light, the Meat Life song. Um, that whole bit where they have the voiceover guy uh, doing the, the baseball game the way through. Um, so that's, that was the idea. Um, what else can I tell you about that? There's a trumpet in it. it was, we had a trumpet player come come down. It's buried in the, the in the um, pre-chorus and it's in the chorus as well. You have to listen out for it though. And that was really cool because that was something we were desperate to have some brass elements. Um, and yeah, it's uh, it's uh, an introduction to Suzanne, I guess, as well. Uh, properly, officially on the record. Mm -hmm. Hard on the Boys was written in the studio, in that one, um, and the chorus was, was supposed to sound like a musical. A bit like Downtown. Downtown, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, um, I mean, we were, um, on the last tour on, Will was playing us some of the uh, vocal, like his uh, voice recordings of, of the first time that he started writing that song, and uh, <laughs> it's just your mumblings like, da, da. Downtown, everyone's waiting. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. And so it became. Uh, we wanted. To, I was trying to work out how that chorus popped and was so big. Um, so we kind of reverse engineered it and changed it drastically. You'd never know, I guess. But. Um, Hiding. 
Downtown with the boys in your bedroom. Yeah. Downtown with the boys in your bedroom. Yeah. Um, it's also got that uh, Love and Years Killing Oh, part, yeah, yeah. Um, which is uh, a really, I think it's a line that kind of sums the record up quite a lot. Yeah. It's cool. Um, it's been a really, really fun song to play live. It's one of my favourite ones we do live. Yeah, mine too. Is that, especially the Loving You is Killing Me bit, it's a great um, live cool response. For, yeah, yeah. For, yeah, especially for everybody in the audience to sing back at you, which is great. And even like one of the first times we played it in the States, people were singing it back, and I was like, oh, no, yeah, that's cool. cool. Yeah. Um, it represents some, like, some of the uh, more ambitious ideas we've had as well. It's a very different song to what we've written before. It starts off similar, like in a similar kind of. Um, style of, of, of song to what we've written before but then when the chorus pops in it's a lot more dramatic and um, a lot more like a musical I think when the yeah. chorus comes in so it's uh, yeah it's different a different pace different uh, different tone to some of the rest of the record which is cool yeah oh misery was the is the only song that's come over from the EPs and the idea was that uh, by putting it on the album we kind of put it in like um, like a time lock, kind of like in, uh, we'd be able to keep it, keep it playing it live, and it would last longer than the EPs. The worry is always that the EPs will get lost in time, and uh, we wouldn't play the songs anymore. So by having Misery uh, transfer onto the album, it means that we can keep playing it live, and it, it's, it's relevant to a lot of people who are going to find us for the first time on this album. And it's also one of our favourite songs to do live as well. Yeah. Um, so it's kind of reimagined slightly, had some more arrangements on it, like it's had a, an updated version for the album, and. Um, yeah, it's, it, it would mark the end of side A on a 12 inch, um, which is something we were really considering when we were putting this record together. The band is a collective, I'd say it is. Yeah, I think that's definitely one of my favourites because it's such a sing along kind of. Um, yeah, like a, it's a big, big chorus. Sounds a bit like Blondie as well. I remember when Ian first wrote that riff and I was like, this sounds like Blondie. Yeah. And. Um, but it's it got an amazing in. drop, isn't it? In yeah, it drops into that mid lay with just the piano. This is the one we wanted as the single, wasn't it? No, we wanted this one as the single originally. Um, yeah. Because it was our favourite. Um, and it's inspired by the Itchen Bridge in uh, Southampton. Um, landmark here, I guess. Um, so, yeah, uh, it's you know a song about the stranger. Um, and um, it's got like a really dramatic Jim Steinman ending, hasn't it? Oh. oh yeah, yeah. That was another thing that we we get to play it live. Yeah, the choir. Yeah, we're, really fun. yeah. That's gonna be.